Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Today is January 25th. Hmm. I am in a weird position, certainly, as often I am when I have insomnia uh, shifting around my sleep schedules to insane levels. Um, in that... I kind of woke up at like 1 in the morning and then didn't really accomplish anything. And then around, ooh, I'd say about 5 or 6 in the morning, I got the whim to to cook what would be m most best described as dinner food, not breakfast food. Um, basically, I did a fancy version of Hamburger Helper. Um, and so, yeah. Then I was then obliged, of course, to eat some of that. So I am in this weird position where I definitely am a little bit higher on my fats and oils and protein for for 11 in the morning central time, uh, which puts me in a weird position. Um, as for the actual accountability section here, let's... Uh, just leave it at that I have I guess Storm of Rival card packs are never gonna have any different offerings there not now um, I finished The Walking Dead the final season of the Telltale series which had only four episodes and fairly obviously was rushed towards the end now that looks like a a good card to have. Get let's see, accelerate. Put a desperado shot in your hand, or play it regularly for rush and follow. Strike destroy the enemy before it can deal any damage in return. Last words at the start of your next turn. Summon Val, the trust trusty getaway car. So. Desperado shots is deal two damage to the enemy, fo enemy follow. If you have one evolution point, deal three to a random enemy follower, and then start start your next turn. Summon Val, trusty getaway car. Val's trusty getaway car has maneuver. Follows that originally cost at least five play points. Allows it to attack. I think that's how maneuver works. And then it has storm, and then strike. It randomly activates. Two of the following effects, draw a card, deal two damage to the enemy or do three damage to a random enemy follower, restore four defense to your leader. That's a pretty good card there. Um, so yeah, I found the ending of The Walking Dead unearned and undeserved. They gave you a sappy, sweet, happy ending in a zombie apocalypse, which just felt wrong frankly. It felt really wrong. Now, in all fairness, I might have felt a lot different had I been more recently play had I more recently played The Walking Dead Season 1, Season 2, Season 3. Because a lot of that, a lot of the ending of Season 4 revolves around the idea that you want to see a really really happy ending happen for uh, Clementine and AJ who are the characters you're dealing with throughout all of the final season and yeah that's that that's nice and all but there just there'd been so much of a delay for me I think there would have been a delay for most people I I don't recall there ever being a case like, I, I can clearly remember them singing the praises, Giant Bomb in particular singing the praises in the Game of the Year talks or something like that of the first season of The Walking Dead. But that next year, that they didn't talk about season two. The year after that, they didn't really talk about season three. There was just this compound growing disinterest, which is a phrase I'm, I'm stealing now and I'm just going to use more and more. Uh... But yeah, there's this growing compound disinterest of, of, 
uh, around an episodic seasonal Telltale game. And I'm frankly a little upset by the fact, I guess we're playing Shadowcraft today, uh, that I have so many other Telltale games still to play because some of the ones like the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy I had completely forgotten about and so that's yet another game that I have at some point will need to need to decide to play I don't expect to play it anytime soon though uh, the the good news there is the Walking Dead was kind of the last of the Halloween-esque Telltale games um, and then I did just one episode, so I barely got past the late opening for Lorelei, which is the third game in the Cat, Cat Lady series. And that is such a darker, like, hardcore, super graphic game. It really highlights that, regardless of the fact that there's tons of zombies and tons of death in the Telltale games, it still was done in kind of a... a a hamstrung somewhat kid-friendly animation style it it felt the telltale walking dead games feels so much like how you can go to a movie and see thousands of people be shot but as long as they don't put any bullet wounds on anybody it, it doesn't get rated adults only where Lorelai will definitely be willing to show you the bullet wounds in and uh, make you focus on it and make that a major thing. Yeah, the Cat Lady series also is more about like insane horrors where the zombies have become so, so commonplace. And in all fairness to the Telltale games, you do stab them in the, in the eye, stab, stab zombies in the eye, stab people in the head, shoot people all the time. Uh, it just became fairly commonplace to the point that one of the things that would have surprised me as far as an ending to the walking dead would have been had nobody died up until the fourth episode or had nobody died at all in that season uh because so many people die and, and it's, it's so blatant how you're given one choice and one decision and that ends up determining whether or not a character dies or not uh, they literally showed you the branching paths at the end of the fourth episode, at the end of the game. And the branching paths are not specifically that different. Uh, re really unsurprising. Let's see. I'm not sure exactly what I'm supposed to be doing here with this deck. Probably was supposed to bury something stronger than a 1-1. One, one. <laughs> but yeah, overall, the, it has been a growing issue certainly where I have had less and less interest as far as going on long diatribes at the end of series uh, more and more I'm willing to rely on the audience to get the general narrative by watching the entirety of my series um, whether that's hopeful fiction or not uh, because who knows if anybody has ever watched any of my series all the way through uh, I, I imagine there's, there's somebody who has watched some of them. But, yeah. It, I really came off with the feeling that it was just really a shame where the way the Telltale games and the Walking Dead series went. Not only because it effectively ruined the careers of everyone who worked at Telltale and I, I honestly would say that their careers are ruined because they worked for probably a decade plus on that Telltale tool and they were so overworked that they couldn't do any side projects they couldn't learn anything new the Telltale tool didn't even have a physics engine 
from what I heard. Um, so it was just, yeah. If somebody, if I was working in a video game company and I was hiring people, and that, and somebody said they worked at Telltale, I'd have to say, oh, I I can try and hire you, but I'm gonna have to severely underpay you because I don't think you're qualified uh, to program in something like Unity or Unreal. I don't think you're qualified to know how to use any technology that would be standard or even close to standard ways of programming for games. Uh, on the other hand, not only did the Telltale concept fail the creators of, of Telltale games, it also failed the concept of potentially getting the Western audience to maybe create a style of visual novel that they would actually appreciate. Um, at the end of the day, the Telltale stories are just visual novels with uh, quick time events. Um, and they are branching visual novels instead of just linear visual novels, which maybe it would have saved Telltale a little bit of money had they just been linear visual novels where you didn't even have choices or you, you have dialogue choices and like the the concepts around Telltale games, the this the last generation of Telltale games, uh, was a concept of characters remembering what you were saying and reacting to it, but that concept really got thrown in the trash bin very quickly, even in the first season, where it really didn't matter. Like the story was going to pretty much end the same way. Uh, and almost certainly Telltale did overcommit by having full animated visual novels when no other visual novel really ever has full animation. At best they have like something close to live 2D. Um, and they definitely made a mistake by having different writers write different episodes and having episodic releases uh, in that fashion there's a big difference between say Nico Pereira which is a visual novel series that has many many volumes but each volume is sold somewhere between $25 to 60 or even a higher and if, yeah, I've seen some visual novels literally be $100 like the visual novels have to demand that high price because they are targeting a niche niche audience even for the Japanese audience and I think at the core of it that that highlights the greedy probably American business style that exists where it's all about um, trying to get get the biggest amount of market share and the biggest number of sales and you can't just be satisfied with having your keep your cult following and and servicing that cult following this is what you see with cable channels too where something like g4 uh, is was a niche series that had hit its maximum amount of saturation that it probably was going to get for a very long time and since they could the the people who bought g4 before they shut it down could only see that as the beginning of a viewer base that they wanted to expand into a higher viewer base uh they very quickly replaced all of the content on G4 with just things that they knew had broader appeal on other channels. Like Cops, for instance, which had no business of ever being on G4 in the first place. So if you were to take the same concept to the Telltale games, the the idea would be now that the new company that that goes by the name Telltale 
would try to take all of those games and go, well, this whole play style and this, these, these characters and these stories don't sell to a wide enough audience, so let's just turn them into a standard, like, asset flipped third party, thir first person shooter game. And honestly, I don't think they're wrong about that either. I, I think at the core, if you took AJ and Clementine, the, the characters from uh, the Walking Dead games, and you just made them skins in a, in, in a first person shooter game, you probably would be better off. And frankly, you don't as the new Telltale, assuming you have the rights to The Walking Dead, which I guess maybe that that is more Skybound entertainment that probably has the rights to that. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, for one second, if Skybound literally just licensed the skins of AJ and Clementine into a standard, uh, more popular game. It would make some sense if they announced tomorrow that there was an Among Us um, skins for the Walking Dead characters and they had like Michonne and AJ and Lee and Clementine and, and then they could also bring in other characters from the TV series and the comic book also so there really is a whole bunch of stuff you could do there without really even having to invest financially yourself. <laughs> and they particularly dropped the ball, in my opinion, with The Walking Dead, in that they added a collectibles concept um, where you could find collectibles in between each episode to decorate a room. I personally have never really been homeless or not had a room to myself, um, so every room I've ever had has been either messy or decorated to my own whims, so the idea of establishing something that feels like home doesn't really apply to me. It, it's just not something that I think... It, 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 it's just not something that I, I ever dealt with so the whole collectibles idea didn't make a lot of sense and didn't I couldn't relate to it I feel like a lot of people couldn't relate to it um, in in all fairness too there are, there are a lot of days where where well that there, there are not a lot of days but there was the occasional times where I'll wake up out of a deep sleep and not even remember which house I'm in because I moved around to enough houses over my lifetime so uh, I won't like it'll just be like where am I so I've never really had houses that that had some distinctive I don't know feeling to it since smell decoration like Shadowcraft is what we're supposed to be playing just wanted to make sure But I, I really don't feel like that's the case there. Uh, th there are other tinier flaws, certainly, uh, with the final season of Walking Dead. One, one of the main things is that the Erickson school that is your the place you end up living is supposed to be this somewhat odd mix between, like, traumatized mental... Uh, kids kids that probably need like drugs and padded rooms and things like that it kind of feels like some of that should be the case but then it's depicted way much more like just a behavior uh school boarding school for bad kids now in all fairness i wouldn't be surprised if almost all boarding schools in the united states that deal with bad behavioral kids probably do somewhat abuse the kids and don't treat it more like like a mental thing as much as they treat it like just 
a behavioral thing. Um, but yeah, the, there was one kid who had scars on his face. They never even told the backstory there as to what happened to his face. Um, so I'm not sure if he got burnt after the zombie apocalypse and the adults abandoned the kids at the school or before. The guy in charge was pretty much a coward, but he didn't seem like he had too much like mental behavior or things. One of the kids did seem to be perhaps a little bit slow uh, mentally, but yeah, everybody else seemed like they were either just abandoned there or not. Uh, more than that they needed to ever have been there in the first place. Um, one would hope, personally, I think, that there's a lot more therapy that happens and keeping kids in safe home structures instead of send sending them off to boarding schools. It would have made a lot more sense, frankly, had they just said it was a school. It was either a fancy boarding school... Or it was just a school in general. They did want to force around it, so that's a little weird. And uh, But it, it would almost have made more sense had they all been somewhat rich kids that were going to boarding schools because they were, they were um, privileged. Because a big factor in the last season is that all these kids are trying to be kidnapped to be forced into being... Uh, war child warriors uh, ch children soldiers and they were trying to do an analogy there but why in the world would you bother to kidnap people with mental problems that y you can't effectively abuse and force and brainwash anyways like most crazy behavioral kids cannot be convinced uh, to do what someone else tells them to. Like, most average kids can't be convinced to do what other people t tell them to do. So, it would have made a lot more sense had the, had the people trying to kidnap these kids simply written them all off. And they make it like the six or seven kids they were potentially going to kidnap would have all fallen in line and... and replaced their their troop numbers by so much that it would have really even mattered which maybe in the walking dead universe there, there's some truth to that where one group is going to war with another group between and each group has only like 20 people but yeah the the, the concept is weak and it goes nowhere the, the events of the story are weak and they go nowhere. Like, it's very obvious that there was room for... There was going to be a fifth episode. And frankly, I think they, they tagged on a very happy-go-lucky ending when uh, instead the main character should have died. And then we, in the last episode, would have potentially seen the ramifications of that through the eyes of uh, AJ. But, no. Nope. They give you this happy ending. It's not the most... most... on the nose... happy ending... that you could possibly make. But it pretty much is. Because they've effectively created this new family. Created this new home for themselves. Uh, the only thing you could have done more... would have been... For a new government or the old U U.S. government to, to helicopter in and like give a cure to the zombie virus and and either kill all the existing zombies or um or kill them all. Yep. That would have been fairly easy to do to to have a. A plane just fly over and release a bunch of gas and it just knocks out all the living characters and kills all the zombies. Uh, 
and then they wake up and then and they're behind this wall with hundreds of, if not thousands of people and then they're perfectly safe and they're guaranteed safety for the rest of their lives as much as you can guarantee that they didn't want to go that far i don't think skybound being the com company and person that wrote the walking dead i don't think he wants to to create a post zombie age they talk about it in the game, but I don't think they really want to do it. And then I can only briefly talk about Lorelei since I only just started it. Um, it definitely is a game that's trying to psychically attack you and the main characters. Uh, even before the cold open, uh, you start with coming into your house, playing as this teenage girl, and you see that the mother has been punched in the eye with a black eye and abused by this father-in-law character uh, you go into the hallway deeper you find that your sister has crawled out of the crib and is crying on the floor and the mother didn't even notice it because she's so mother, out of it Come mentally uh, probably on. drunk Let's play uh, you 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 do some uh, puzzle solving to move your move the story forward then you take a bath and in the middle of the bath the drunk father walks in and pees in the toilet and you think oh well maybe he's just a drunk that's peeing if you're being extremely generous but there's definitely a creepy perverted vibe to it and they hit the hammer again less than five minutes later to tell you no this guy is totally perving on his uh, on this 16 to 18 year old girl um, who's supposed to be his daughter-in-law well, I don't know if they're actually married but I think it's easiest just to assume that um, so yeah there's really nasty people and that is the cat lady trilogy in general nasty events nasty people grotesque horrific um, Marilyn Manson-esque imagery, uh, hardcore, uh, like, uh, crazy imagery, stuff that you just don't see in video games outside of something. Well, even if you think about something like Agony and the Eyes Wide Shut game that, that came out, both of those also went heavy, heavy sexual and really didn't even go that hardcore and grotesque. Um, so I, I would say that the Cat Lady series is, even though it's it's simpler, more simplistic animation, it's still willing to go a lot further in into the dark realms of s someone's mind and some artistic artist's skill than what you get in any other game. Like... Most games you look at, like Doom, is kind of a great example where it's just been very Disneyified and cartoony, and and Doom as a series has never really been that horrific or grotesque. Um, of course, there were limitations, so I imagine at some point there was an attempt to try to make Doom or Quake or some Doom clone actually as scary as it possibly could be but they, they never really felt like they could go that far they're always holding back they're always trying to get the biggest audience so they're they're, they're self-censoring themselves a little bit or maybe their uh, game developers are just not that creative that might also be the case forgot some of these backgrounds interact like that um. come out, come out, but yeah I, I haven't gotten into the real horrific things I can't directly remember if Lorelai is the character who ends up show being the queen of maggots or if that was the characters in Downfall, which I've mostly forgotten about Downfall. The only thing I really remember about Downfall was how you were playing, I think, as James. And so, like, his wife. 
may have been the one that turned into Queen of Magus, or we may have just seen another character like that. Um, but then James basically had this loyalty system where you had to either be all good, all bad, and he kind of had this weird split personality based on your dialogue choices. And if you went in the mushy middle, which, which is almost certainly what you would do, because even one mistake one way or the other would le land you there, then you got an average ending and it even though downfall wasn't that long of a game i i wouldn't want to see it again let's see i clicked this and then it kind of moved the the things forward so i wanted to see if that happened i did work on my router a little bit um there was some big vulnerabilities in DNS mask using DNS secure um, which I'm not even sure if I'm really using that uh, that part uh, that left some major vulnerabilities and required the firmware to be updated they did put out a new uh, update for it so I installed that and that seemed to work perfectly fine without me having to go through all kinds of uh, hoops and ladders to potentially uh, to, to potentially update it and then I made some tweaks still trying to see if I can get the NTP the network time protocol server to actually work it seems like it's working but it seems like it might only work with a little bit of help by using the built-in NTP client to get the time first and foremost from someone else which is kind of redundant but not surprising that the underlying uh, experimental code that I enabled is not ready for prime time and thus has to rely on a more built-in uh, system and it is very experimental because all I'm trying to do is get my router to to act as a server for the time uh, f it, for everybody inside my network instead of them going out to something some other server which maybe they are better just going out to some other server anyways But yeah, I've had little hiccups here and there still with the network and we can see, although in Shadowverse's case, I think it often has way more to do with Shadowverse than, than anything else because my streaming seems to work fine. So maybe I should just possibly, maybe I need to adjust my quality of service a little bit on the upload and give a little bit more to the gameplay itself because yeah this isn't particularly great I definitely I'm still in the position where I'm not quite overly eager eager to to jump back to record more footage uh, I'm not sure there ever was a, a great point where I was super super eager to make footage except for like right at the beginning of my me starting a YouTube channel but over the past couple of years in particular I've definitely gotten older and felt a little bit more tired and so it is a lot slower to get back to it and I've got more distractions certainly although I was very happy to realize that I've mostly completely stopped watching any giant bomb content other than the beast cast and bomb cast I think that's mostly because they don't even put anything on their YouTube channel anymore that isn't behind their own paywall um, but I've also completely eliminated Jim Sterling uh, I haven't watched any of his content in nearly six months, and I am more than happy to report that I 
not missed anything of any importance. Up. Oh. Which, ironically, we do have a Konami article today. Hmm. Hmm. So is there anything else more to talk about as far as the accountability section today as far as what I did? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. The decision process is definitely a little different when you're trying to when I'm trying to find things to record for for Halloween periods even though I'm recording content for a second Halloween which will happen around April uh, because the Telltale game I played is zombies so I don't want to play a secondary zombie game and fear two is ghosts and well ghosts and possessed creatures and kind of its own unique thing so lorelei is about the only kind of game that i could find i'm starting to finally whittle down the number of horror games that are available to the point where uh, maybe in a year or two we won't even need a second Halloween. We'll have just caught up with all the, the really, really scary games. Of course, things like Resident Evil. Like, Resident Evil 4, I don't feel like is really a game that needs to be played in Halloween particularly. Uh, whereas Resident Evil 7 might be better suited to be played in Halloween. Because of the twist from 4 being way more action and cartoony monstrosities seven being way more horrific i still don't own seven either so i'm kind of at a standstill in that point also while the walking dead is mostly a visual novel uh fear 2 is a first person shooter and lorelei is a uh, point and click adventure basically although it's not quite point and click it's more walk over something and press a button but even that is amazing because Lorelei actually has controller support and is made in unity where the two previous games one of which was a remaster of the original game were made in a much weaker much older scripted um uh, a type of con type of engine something closer to RPG maker or even more simplistic than that really um, so now it's just in the turn there hmm so yeah, the the cat lady and downfall both was a keyboard only game. I don't even think the mouse did anything. It was just straight keyboard. You would just W A S D over something and interact with it. Now Lorelai um, uses a controller. Well, I'm not really changing the gameplay much. It did, however, severely allow them because I went to Unity. I can already tell it allowed them to do a lot more with the visuals and have the creator of that series actually go down the path of actually learning how to make a realistic modern game. Um, whereas, as much as I love the Cat Lady and Downfall, they, they definitely kind of feel like a low effort game compared to anything else. And if I wouldn't blame somebody for seeing the Cat Lady and saying, oh, this is just a low effort game that's way overpriced. And if they just happen to miss the massive positive reviews on it, then then I could see them easily dismissing a game like The Cat Lady. I could also see lots of reasons that people would easily dismiss and never play The Cat Lady. It is a very much a niche product. Um, but yeah, we're getting a lot of zooming and rain effects uh, from what I saw for the first 30 to 40 minutes I played it. Um, but they are still sticking to 
a very dirty, broken comic book flat art style and the animation for walking ends abruptly when using a controller in particular uh, so you just don't have um, you, you just don't have as much of a experience as you might want to have well that didn't work what this does. I thought this was going to do something. No, that would have only done something had I done less, done more damage to it first. Probably screwed them out. So, yeah. There's a lot of visual and audio reasons that they clearly, in Lorelei, are going to try and have you feel uncomfortable. So, like, you, a very basic thing is you can use a mirror, and when you use the mirror, it slowly pans and zooms in on the reflection of the character in the mirror, just ever so slowly until it finally has the mirror completely centered in the screen and you sit there and it takes like five to ten seconds to do it it's really slow and and i'm just assuming there's got to be a jump scare you've got to see something here or if there's no jump scare there there's at least going to be something shown there that that lorelei the character doesn't react to but no nothing happened at least for as long as i sat there um, and that was probably the most disconcerting part about it. Every time you walk into a different room, the, the scale of the characters is a little bit different. When you try to leave a room, they'll have people in the doorways to scare you and make you feel trapped in the room. It really touches a level of psychology that... Honestly, I don't think has been even attempted since, like, American McGee's Alice or Madness Returns. Alice Madness Returns. Um, there is that, that phrase being triggered. And I think we are... All art is in danger, if you're not careful, of being so overly concerned about um, triggering somebody that they are not willing to, to go into a dark place and tell a darker story. There we go. What does this one do? Steal one damage to random enemy follower? Fine, we can kill that. Hmm. Do we need to involve anything else? Nope, Wanna so we'll just up? attack, attack, and then in the turn. Hmm. Yeah. There are definitely a lot of shows. That I saw on TV or either dreamt up like there there is probably half a dozen stories that I think I either had a dream about and didn't actually ever occur or they are stories that were on TV shows or movies or something and um, I can't remember enough of them to actually accurately place when it happened but also there's just a lot of weird stuff that was either kids were allowed to watch or it was targeted to kids that happened um, back in the 80s and the 90s, and a lot of weird, weird garbage, and a lot of that felt, like, way more edgy and way more willing to go 
to a darker mental place than than nowadays. Everything really does have this sugar coating over it. Um, which, I don't know, maybe maybe after the pandemic we'll, we'll see a switch back to more content like that, more entertainment like that, in the same way that Ring Around the Rosie is, is said to be based off the Black Plague. It may really just have been that we had a few decades of relative normality compared to what it could have been. Your now, now we will start to see more macabre stuff. Or, or maybe just macabre really fell out of fa fashion. Hmm. Hmm. That certainly was a, a factor as to why I was drawn more to watching anime as I got older than watching live action TV or uh, even cartoons uh, was the fact that whether it was horror or whether it was sci-fi, whether it was action or whether it, even if it was romance, and what was being the the extremes they were willing to take it to in anime was way more than the watered down stories that they would put on regular TV in America, and by comparison, regular American TV was boring. And, and I would argue I was probably bored of regular TV first and then sought out something more extreme. Uh, Mother, father, come on. My barrier is impenetrable. Japan has thankfully not really failed to deliver for many decades on that. Although there there is definitely some watered down content, like for for as much as as Dragon Ball Z might be extreme fighting, uh, there's there is every season a decent collection of fairly boring fighting anime that come out and then don't get renewed. And I haven't seen major horror anime come out in, in a while. Although there is a anime series right now based on the Higurashi When They Cry visual novel series, which is horrific. Right. But I think that's enough. Man, I've been talking for about 50 minutes. Um, so let's let's cover the news, um, video game news. I can report it does seem like there's there's basically no reason for me to use the suspension function of the great suspender plugin on Chrome anymore. Uh, I have enough RAM and last stream pretty much proved that it is better frankly to um to just have it always loaded. Hmm. I also saw a review for Haiti 2. Haiti being the game series with the big <laughs> Gluteus Maximus uh, character. And you a low angled camera so you can see your big butt uh, that throughout much of the gameplay. Interestingly, from the review that I saw, Haiti 2 eliminates a lot, uh, eliminates all the platforming that was in the first game, but the platforming in the first game, according to the reviewer, wasn't that good. But Haiti 2 is not that good either. It's like really difficult. So that, that puts me in a weird position if, if I'm to believe the reviewer, which I see no reason not to at least assume. I'm going to believe the reviewer. 
Like, you've got two very different games that are basically just the same game, one with the platforming removed and the graphics slightly improved and made a lot harder. Um, so it very well might be a series that would get good by the third or fourth game and then there might not be a good reason to, to actually play any of the previous games. You might just want to instead Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Man, that literally didn't help me with anything. Okay. Okay, so I can evolve this. <laughs> and hit that. You are forgiven. And then... Detestable. Yep. Don't think I'm gonna win here. Hmm. Yeah, but that definitely puts me in a weird position where it doesn't sound like either one of the games really have much relevancy so maybe if I got the first game fairly cheaply I might might be willing to spotlight it and just go oh, well he is an artist who likes big butts and he cannot lie and that's the entire review in a nutshell as, as much as I could probably say alright Moving on, we have a game called Monstrum 2 in beta on Steam, which, okay, I see a monster, Mother, I see platforms, Run. see heads up display, seems like this is a, 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 what is that, does that word mean? It's a player versus player game, it's free. Asymmetric multiplayer game that's the word i'm trying to say i can't believe that so many people are still pushing that concept it, it really goes to show how asymmetric gameplay must work really really nicely in things like pax conferences and get togethers between other um other mainstream video game journalists but it really it just highlights the idea that that they are completely ignoring people who are losers like me and don't have friends to play with consistently, which I think is probably the majority of gamers, and particularly as they get older. It's, it's just very, very unlikely you're going to be able to convince your friends to play the same game and be free at the same time and get more than an hour of entertainment out of it. And I don't think particularly right now people are just rolling in cash that they can jump from a one random new thing to the next random new thing um, in a weird way this asymmetric multiplayer is almost like the opposite of the fads we see with like Fortnite and PUBG and uh, Among Us where those games are either cheap or free and kids jump on them mostly at first because they're cheap and free and that's what makes them popular or perhaps more accurately they get covered by some youtuber because they're cheap and free and then the kids start playing them moving on we have a game on steam here called dino eruption which seems to be a vr jurassic park experience of some sort hmm which i can't say i hate the idea the graphics don't look particularly great and i think that inherently is always going to be the problem with any um any like vr game is that you've got to get those graphics to be hyper hyper realistic better than even a standard triple a game 
if you really want it to work. This is $19.99 English full audio. It seems to have some interaction and actual gameplay on top of also being uh, somewhat of a visual novel. Choose your own dialogue. I'm going to put this on the follow list that way I'd like to see how other people will view it. Interesting. Well, I've been signed out, unfortunately. So, Gamma Sutra has this article updated Microsoft's rolled back its Xbox Live Gold price increase. Um, Microsoft has updated its post on Xbox Wire to say it is not changing Xbox Live Gold pricing. It's also not requiring an Xbox Live Gold membership to play free free to play games on Xbox. I don't know if that was ever the case, but it kind of destroys the idea of free to play games if if you do have to have the online service. They they did an abrupt about face. Now, when I talked about this on Friday, I mean, it must have been a little bit sleepy because it to me it seemed like they were only increasing the price by a dollar. Like not um, not, not like a dollar a month, but apparently they were increasing the price by double, which that's different. Uh, the quote here is, we messed up today and you were right to let us know. Connecting and playing with friends is a vital part of the gaming and we failed to meet the expectations of players who count on it every day. As a result, we've decided not to change Xbox Live Gold, pros, gold pricing. So they definitely were, were planning on doing that, this. And they probably were trying planning on doing that earlier. I imagine they had hoped that the Xbox Series S and Series X were just so popular that nobody would have even cared. But so many different things have happened. The idea that they even bothered to, to try to announce that just to roll it back. It's not like they were fishing for good press and and them listening is going to get them good press. Or they were just desperate for any news. Somebody probably should be fired in the advertising department and the planning department there. Uh, to not have realized that this was going to cause the kind of controversy it caused hmm. see like the original story here as I read it doesn't feel like it's doubling oh I guess maybe it it's this part the six month plan doubled from $20 to fifty nine ninety nine. And three months went from five dollars to that's that's like four times as expensive. Whereas the one month subscription only went up a dollar. That's the part I just read. So I'm just a bad reader. I didn't read the rest of the sentence. They they were going to continue to invest in the Xbox community. Well, that certainly shows explains why more people were upset than. I thought would have been. Hmm. But yeah. This doesn't really fix the bigger issue that the Xbox Live game gold really should be free. And there's been a push to, to basically say, hey, yeah, online play should be free up in anyways. Um, they, they really want people to use Games Pass and get the free games. So, they, they were trying to push people, I think, more than, more than just 
charging more money. I think they were trying to push people to to convert to Games Pass Ultimate, but they failed miserably. We could evolve this. I won't do anything. It's been one of those situations where we may look like we're about to win and then we're still gonna lose. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, Xbox. Games Pass Ultimate would have been fourteen ninety nine per month. So I, I imagine secretly they definitely wanted to to specifically get rid of Xbox Games Live. But that's totally the wrong way to do that. Um, if anything, they, they needed to just convert everybody who is an Xbox uh, you could have easily done like a Christmas thing with so, where it would have been like surprise everybody with Xbox Live Gold now has Xbox games um, ultimate for the same amount of time the price however will be $14.99 um, when you want to renew or it, maybe even you get a halfway discount where for people with Xbox Live Gold now the price would be twelve ninety nine instead of fourteen ninety nine for the next twenty four months. Like you could have done that nicer and more in a more generous manner if your goal is just to get rid of Xbox Live Gold. Um. Yeah, and that, that almost makes it feel like a division of Microsoft is just going to not make their budget. Uh, the way Microsoft puts it, they, they put it free to play the free to play games to be unlocked. Mother, father, hmm. come on. Yeah, and for free to play games, you will no longer need an Xbox Live Gold membership to play those games on Xbox. We're working hard to deliver this change as soon as possible. Uh, but in all fairness, how many free-to-play games are there on the Xbox uh, environment that don't require online gameplay? Because that's that's the craziness of it, is that, that there probably is a less than 20% of free-to-play games that you could play that wouldn't also require online connectivity constant online connectivity this really is another example of um them just sticking their foot in their mouth and and microsoft needs to fire the people at xbox that keep doing this like they keep stepping on their own tail they've got somebody with a wrong-headed business mind making top level decisions and they need to fix that because they're, they're causing controversies for themselves when otherwise the Xbox infrastructure should be just having its praises sung uh, as a good competitor to the PlayStation 5 and Switch if not the better option compared to the PlayStation 5 and Switch depending on what kind of games you want to play. Is it edible? Mm. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Seconds to Starlight with a lot of different misspellings here. My Heart's Reflection. Just looks like a cell phone visual novel of some kind of softly drawn anime characters. I think the idea here is that this character wants to be a girl and sees himself as a girl and is a reflection. This is free. Uh, 
This game contains scenes of transphobic bullying, misgendering, and family confrontation. English only. Uh, I feel like if you're going to make a story like this and then you're going to make it English only, then why are you using the Asian art style? Like, seems a little weird. Like, I'm not going to make any giant claims of appropriating someone else's artistic style because that's ridiculous. Every artist should steal from every other artist, but you you could at least try to honor that art style by trying to get it translated to Japanese. Not that a story like that would probably sell well in Japanese at all. It, it does definitely feel like that there's a decent chance that a story like this is just some some bad writing promoting a more li liberal ideology and mentality which could be done well and could be done poorly let me see if this developer has worked on anything else or this publisher has worked on anything else let's see have a game called N-O-I-S-Z that came out in 2018 that's positive Good folk for Let's see what that is this one is a bullet hell rhythm visual novel hmm. and this one is English Japanese and Chinese so at least in that case they did bother to to create it this kind of looks like the same art style so it may just be that the artist worked on the both games or the, the artist did work on both games hmm. and that was the publisher though So the Skyhound Works developer has a more modern page. So there's another story here called Two Seconds to Starlight Forever My Diamond. Hmm. A free visual novel about being really gay for your best friend. So they, they seem to be going hard in that direction. We've got two stories here. Free a free visual novel about standing up to, world, to the world to be yourself. So I kind of wonder if this creator is, is doing some self-insertion of their own story or how they would like their own story to have gone. Hmm. Is there anything wrong with a a developer doing variations on the theme and having a type of game that they make? I don't think so. Like it would be ridiculous to to make that argument and then not see the um, comparisons to say the Sinran Kagura series, which is totally built a whole series built around like a male gaze on anime f females uh, and there's plenty of first person shooter developers out there that just want the militaristic action dude bro experience the halo experience uh, the call of duty experience and wouldn't really criticize anybody for making those types of games it certainly can get preachy and can get annoying, and it may not be for everybody. In any case, I find Call of Duty preachy and annoying, well, at least annoying, in what it offers. This next game is tagged sexual content, so let me double check to make sure all of the content is YouTube family friendly. Here we have a game on Steam called The Fairy Tale You Don't Know. Seems to be a collection of 
fairy tale characters, Brothers Grimm characters, kind of like Ruby, which Ruby is definitely a series that I feel like probably went in directions that its initial fan base was not expecting when it originally came out. Um, it's, I'm not sure it's really worth watching wherever it was. So, if it's it, it's a game, obviously, that is seventeen dollars and nine cents, Japanese full audio, English and Chinese subtitled. It's a chasing puzzle RPG. Hmm. Yeah, this is. I think mostly just. An adult game in the with an RPG element. This does not look good to have the controls marked this way. That makes it look like a cell phone game. And chasing, I think, probably means that you are being chased. One of the heroines is being chased by either the big bad wolf or something else. And you just have to move in specific directions to avoid being caught. Let's see. So I guess if I put this, this on the field, I need to borrow your bones. And then do that. It. Do that. Yeah. It is a very basic kind of mobile phone game where you are moving and every time you take a step, a chaser character monster moves towards you also so you're just trying to get from point a to point b without being captured that's too simplistic of a game it's a shame though i i i like the concept of having snow white little red riding hood alice in wonderland and thumbelina all in the same game it's kind of a um kingdom hearts type game if you were going to do a perverted kingdom hearts um, but also, that is probably a great indication that the creator of a game or a story doesn't really have a great idea. If you're just stealing already established characters, particularly if you think about like the Brothers Grimm characters, or or that are way more established by Disney, like what do you really know about Little Red Riding Hood or Snow White or Alice in Wonderland or Thumbelina? If you just know the Brothers Grimm story, you know very little. If you've watched the two-hour Disney movies, you know a little bit more. If you're, if you're going to assume those are the two same characters. But you still don't really know a lot about any of those characters. And they're all kind of just damsels in distress characters. They're, they're, they're not well written. They're, they're no Sherlock Holmes by any means. So why not instead create your own characters... That you can claim a copyright on and maybe just steal some generic concepts if if even that much like i don't even know if there's that much to really steal hmm. like little red riding hood you can draw a character that looks like little red riding hood and give her a red riding hood and that's pretty much all you you need or can get for a character like that we're slowly moving up in the battle passes let's see one more shadow craft then we can play whatever we want stick with lot one Uh, Gamatsu tweeted this out a while ago, a couple days ago. The Pocket Station, a memory card peripheral for the original PlayStation, released, was released 22 years ago, January 23rd, 1999. There was something similar to this. I'm not sure if it was exactly this for the Dreamcast. Um, and it's a... 
it's an interesting middle piece of technology certainly in the it was right when pocket um tamagotchis existed so the idea of a portable game boy like device that could only play one game and was cheaper made a lot of sense also it was a combination or at least the the uh dreamcast was a combination memory card also with transferable data which um that that certainly um was an interesting idea it, it highlights one of the biggest issues that that started occurring pretty much as soon as the game boy happened in the west and i guess maybe in japan it was less of an issue let's just stick to the stereotype that the japanese school children were better behaved but in the west in the united states plenty of kids were taking game boys to school and playing with them and the teachers didn't like it because they were either playing with them in class um, or they were getting stolen or broken i mean the, the game boy at the time was not a a particularly cheap device and yeah even now i imagine teachers are struggling completely with kids having cell phones and and smart watches and, and gadgets of all kinds and bringing them into school hmm. both the dreamcast and this i imagine did not work particularly well a four directional buttons and a action button is not enough and a little black and white screen here probably even if it was a denser resolution than the pixel resolution of the Game Boy, it probably wasn't by much. So, it's no surprise we didn't see great success of that, or even a major fandom for anything like that. Let's see, I'm gonna... Do. do that. Then in the turn. Hmm. And see, nowadays the Switch is portable enough that you can have a decently powered gaming console and take that with you to school to be broken or stolen. Um, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense. If the switch had some components that broke off and had a smaller resolution screen, if anything like that was going to happen, we would have seen it happen with things like the smartwatch and games on the smartwatch. And people have just wised up to the idea of games not being good if the monitor, if the screen is bad. Um, which anybody who's played an old LCD screen handheld could have told you that but yeah there definitely were a lot of christmases where people just needed a gadget and that was it like they were just looking for anything and everything to potentially to have a have as a gift to give each christmas Hit that. And then hit that. <laughs> Get rid of that one. Next, we have a game on Steam called 87 Aftermath. A ball rolling game. This clearly is just a experiment in the physics programming just a low effort unity game six dollars and 99 cents with a third party eula english full audio allegedly nothing there of any real interest i am not going to get through the news at this rate i moved too slow to start off with 
Open Critic has an article here. February's Games with Gold lineup has been revealed, which I imagine not too many people are happy about that announcement at the moment. Let's see. First two games are Gears 5 and Resident Evil, both available from the February 1st to the 28th. Next title is Dendara Trials of Fear Edition between February 16th to March 15th. And then the fourth game is Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, which is February 1st to the 15th. Hmm. Which I'm not sure if Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb is a game I... I own, or can own, on Steam. Let's do a little research here. Let's see. Did come out on Windows. Steam. It is on Steam. Alright, well, I'll have to make sure that this game is available. It's one of the ones I bought, which I wouldn't be surprised if I missed it. This is, this is the kind of action game, though, that I feel like the new Indiana Jones game is almost certainly going to fail if it is like this, because it is just going to be called by a new generation a... Tomb Raider clone or an Uncharted clone and that's while inaccurate that's exactly what they anyone should should know that a newer generation not particularly familiar with Indiana Jones or previous Indiana Jones games um, and it is a weird thing to certainly say that there might be a newer generation that is that video game buying age that very possibly doesn't even have a clue who Indiana Jones is. Hmm. But, yeah. I would like to play The Emperor's Tomb. There's definitely more motivation today after the announcement of them potentially working on a new Indiana Jones game than there was like a month ago when before they had announced it. See, this next game is tagged sexual content and nudity again. So, oddly, we, we don't have a case here where things were being held back for Friday. Instead, we've got a Monday where adult games are just being allowed to be listed. So, while it does seem like adult games are getting bundled up fairly commonly... They and only released somewhat on the same days, which at a certain point that may just be me seeing patterns when there actually aren't any. The consistency of it, it coming out every two weeks on a Friday has been pretty much uh, forgotten at this point. <clears throat> Gabe Newell did come out and say that they were working on new games that they actually plan on releasing, which is about all he can say, because it'd be ridiculous for him to come out and say, actually we're working on games we're not planning on releasing, or we're not working on games, or we're not ready to talk about new games. Uh, he did say that Half-Life Alex helped him break that rut, and he kind of had said that already, that them just being able to turn out anything let them, broke them out of the rut of having spent 10 years trying to make Half-Life 3 and failing, or working on the Source Engine 2 and, and failing. Oh. So that might be affecting the release schedules of some of these games if we have people doing better things with their time other than deciding whether a game is going to be released on Steam or not. Although I still feel like there should be somebody whose job and sole focus should be deciding whether games should be on Steam or not. Because this game, Prison Girl, is kind of a great example of a game that I don't feel like should be on Steam. This is so clearly an asset flip sex game 
that would have been fine on something like the Otaku. It's 3D. It looks fine. Sure. But it's kind of a stealth game. Ooh, I wonder if this is the same developer as the Cinderella game. $4.99 English Chinese. I suspect that means that you probably won't even see much actual tan tantalizing sex content in the game. So it probably doesn't even work well that way. Hmm. Seems like the girl in black lingerie will yell at you or torture you if you get caught. Although I, I don't see him actually doing anything. I see them fading out in the videos to um, scene after scene. Most of these games are just asset flips of characters being posed and there, there really isn't much animation or actual logic behind the movement. It does feel a lot like the Cinderella game, but it's not. And you can see here that it is only 18% of the reviews are positive. There are 16 user reviews, so it's already in the negative section. Um, Yeah, so even of the the people who would have bought this kind of game are they're already not happy with it because obviously it's just a low effort game. And that that is probably a great example of the difference between a Chinese adult game that's low effort and a Japanese adult game that would be a little bit more effort. Is that the Japanese take a little bit of pride in their work even when they're being perverted and they they would not typically speaking put out something that was dissatisfactory in a lot of ways that also might be a great argument towards something like the um, something like a visual novel instead which doesn't require using 3D models and allows them to potentially have better story and better concepts. Moving on, next we have a game called Exodium Episode 4, which I feel like this developer has been putting out basically the same game over and over again over the course of the couple of months as an asset flip first person shooter. English is not supported, French. $1.99. Let's look at this developer's oh, release schedule. Yeah, yeah. We have Episode 7 coming out February 12th, 2021. Episode 1 came out January 1st. Then Episode 2 uh, January 8th. And then Episode 3 January 15th. Just flooding the Steam market. Um... So they, they already have plans for seven episodes. And oddly, this one seems to be listed, but five and six are listed as upcoming. All the screenshots look very, very similar. Like, in a weird way, they're trying to bring back episodic games. And they are totally not in a position to bring back episodic games and make them successful. And they don't have any right to come back and be successful either because episodic games suck. <laughs> As someone who just played an episodic game uh, and finished playing what was probably a five year journey of playing The Walking Dead, which, was, which were episodic games. That was a sucky experience. It would have been a better experience had they cut out a lot of the garbage filler material and had me play one, maybe two games that covered the story of The Walking Dead 
and then I would have remembered a lot more characters and a lot more events. Not that it really mattered. Next we have a game on Steam here called Doll Explorer Prologue, which it almost sounds like an adult game, but instead it looks like it's a maybe card-based game. Yeah. Let's see, it's a free-thinking puzzle game where you choose commands such as move forward, attack to transverse a dungeon. Okay. It's English, Japanese. This is one of those cases where the I'd be much more interested in the actual game instead of a prologue, which is just a demo. So, at this point, I think, well, I don't want to just close it, but I think I kind of have to just close it. Because until there's a real game to put on the fall list, I just don't feel like there's a need to fill up my fall list with garbage. Okay, can we do anything? This head can't be taken. Mm. Yeah, I can't evolve that. So all I can do is that. Which that ruined me. Hmm. Let's see. Ah! You're mean. Ah, you're too strong. So we have a Bloomberg article here. More and more we're getting these Bloomberg articles. And something I'm blocking here is causing that to pop up. Uh, Blizzard absorbs the Activision studio after dismantling the Classic Games team. Um, so the studio that had worked on uh, franchises like Skylanders, Crash Bandicoot, and Tony Hawk, including Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, which they just re-released. Um, has now been absorbed by Blizzard, which it's just like that's the last bit of that's just one more instance in which Activision Blizzard and Blizzard have gotten worse and worse, and that they clearly are kind of desperate to have some kind of team that can maintain their games while they are bleeding talent. Um, but I think almost everything that Activision Blizzard does, you can assume, is done for financial reasons. And this sings a very sour song as far as if is there ever going to be a Tony Hawk 3? Probably not. Are we ever going to see another good game come under the banner of Blizzard or Activision? Probably not. Um... All of those teams are either long since gone or in the process of leaving Activision Blizzard to work at other companies to do new new projects and and new things. And sadly, that kind of is the cycle in video game development: is that you either live long enough to be hated, or you die and and move on to a new company and work on a new project that might be a spiritual successor to your games. But it really goes to point out that they it should just be an un, unwritten rule to never make sequels of any sort in the video game industry. Just always make one-shot stories and never continue anything. Like I think if you took a list of every sequel of video games that came out, you probably wouldn't have... A high percentage of successful, critically well received uh, experiences. Uh, but then there are definitely some that get good sequels, and then the third game is bad, or the fourth. In the end, it always ends badly, though. You know that's how it's going to happen.
Next, we have a game on Steam here called Neo Cube. This is obviously just a low effort light cycles game snake game from the looks of it it's early access 899 third party eula nothing there interests me visually speaking at the bare minimum have more shadows and cards in your deck and invoke it oh jeez i don't think that would likely ever happen See, Gamma Sutra has a job listing here for a senior gameplay engineer for Jackbox Games in Chicago, Illinois. Hmm. See, Gamma Sutra has an article saying that digital sales now make up 91% of Focus Home Interactive's revenue. I believe Focus Home Interactive, wasn't it just recently acquired by Tencent? There is also rumors now that Tencent is building up billions of dollars to acquire either EA or Ubisoft or some other big player, which, like, no, duh. And I bet that some of that financing is coming from some places they would rather you not know it's coming from. What do you think you're doing? Um, to almost, almost certainly assume that that's the case. Probably should have evolved that at that point. But yeah. It, it's really just going to come down to a, a question about whether big companies like EA really want to, to be acquired by Tencent. Twitter game gaming is off its mark, and I wanted to push this here. Like, I don't think as far as, like, Murlocs and Hearthstone, anything had happened around January 22nd. So there's kind of, like, no reason for this to have been posted other than this is a reference to, like, Tony Hawk and Vicarious Games being acquired by um, Activision slash Activision Blizzard. But this is, like, pretty much too obscure of a thing for Twitter gaming to put out because remember you, Twitter gaming has to be in that mushy middle where um, where it is potentially trying to target people who are just brand new to gaming and people who are hardcore into gaming and as I'm scrolling down their Twitter feed there is Really just a collection of bad tweets that don't make a lot of sense. Also, it's not like they're really even promoting people who, like, stream on Twitter. Can you even stream video on Twitter? No, no you can't. So, they, they just don't even have a business model there that makes sense. Come on. So, yeah, I, I don't know what they think they're doing, but it seems like their whole Twitter feed is being run by somebody who's not particularly competent in, in in advertising or PR, public relations. I wouldn't, frankly, have been surprised or upset if Twitter Gaming was a twi Twitter group that talked about board games more than it talked about video games. This ungrateful world will perish. It does make an interesting argument, though, whether that is even video game news at all talking about Twitter gaming 
just because something says it's video game related doesn't like inherently make make it true. It could very well be irrelevant. Guess. Gonna hit that. Save yourself. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Antimatter Elevator, which looks like it's nothing. Looks like a very simplistic puzzle block pushing game. Free English only third party EULA. I have no idea why you would want a third party agreement for a free game. Uh, the YouTube CEO uh, put out a political thing from whitehouse.gov, um, which, yeah, YouTube CEO being particularly political is not going to help help YouTube much, in my opinion. I don't think she's got anything really new to say about YouTube. I was going through all my watch later videos, which that whole system on, on YouTube is a mess because you you put something in your watch later feed playlist and it never gets recommended to you on the suggested videos. So you never catch up. Which is the one thing you would expect it to do, is at some point say, hey, you put this on the watch later, do you want to wa actually watch this later? So instead you come back whenever you next check it, maybe years later, and, and then I'm just eliminating, uh, eliminating things because they're no longer relevant. Which is a weird way to deal with with any form of entertainment to say I'll check back in a year or longer and see if I'm still interested in watching that. It saves a little bit of time, but it definitely keeps you out of the loop. The yeah, Tech Raptor has the same article. Vercarious Visions moves to Blizzard Entertainment. Um, Yeah, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 plus 2. Will we ever see Pro Skater 3 plus 4? Which I guess Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 did exist originally. Um, I wouldn't really hold my breath for it. Uh, in inherently, the flaw here has to be at least some small percentage put on the fans. I know people loved Pro Skater 1 and 2, but if, if you're just clamoring for a remaster of the old game, you're, you're not really moving forward the genre. The, the Pro Skater Tony Hawk players should have been clamoring for a new skating game not just re-releases of the old games and in particularly in pro skater 1 and 2 i think a lot of people were clamoring because they liked the audio um, and the soundtrack and and how they felt when they were young playing those games more than how much they actually liked the skating game which that doesn't really work your tech raptor has an article Tencent purchased a ma majority stake in clay entertainment so if the rumors are true that Tencent is also trying to buy a major company they are currently in a buying frenzy gamma sutra has that same article here T Tencent the chinese china based mega corporation Somebody somewhere around the world needs needs to have the authority and the wherewithal to say no. We're not going to let more mega corporations be formed. If anything, we need to break up the mega corporations before. Um, let's see. 
Samsung is kind of a great example of that in the sense that uh, that in South Korea, it's somewhere around 70% of everyone employed in South Korea has a job that is affected one way or another by Samsung because they own not just the major electronics company, Samsung, but they also own like all of the convenience stores and they make almost all products and and do a lot of different things. They have a lot of pies that they have their fingers in, or at least in the West, mostly companies stick to one or two genres, and only relatively recently have we started to see things like Amazon um, and Google trying to trying to be a player in multiple fields. This is a weird game to have on Steam. It's called Prop Hunt, but there's been a mod called Prop Hunt for Half-Life 2 for a very long time, so I don't know how you can call it early access. I don't know how you can sell it for $7.49. The only thing I could... Oh, apparently you can report bugs and leave feedback on the discussions board. Interesting. Does that actually report a game? No. This is the report a product game. See, I feel like maybe Prop Hunt as a mod based on the Source Engine can be sold, but it, it feels fishy to say the least. What can we report things as? You can report if it's broken, which is obviously their most interest, because this is not alphabetical. If it contains child exploitation of any kind, if it contains fraud, um, if it contains adult content that isn't appropriately labeled or and age-gated, if it's harmful, that malware or virus, if it's defamatory, or if it is a legal violation, which um, that excludes copyright which is its own form. I think there is probably a flaw, certainly, in the idea of having hey, someone, just an individual, think that they are... Um, they are the arbiters of whether something is illegal or legal, uh, illegal or legal when that's really what judges should be determining and that they definitely it's weird to have people trying to enforce laws um like we, we don't really need that uh i've always taken it from the perspective if if you see someone robbing a bank that's closed, you should ignore it. If you see someone robbing a person on the street, then you should report it. Uh, and, like, but diff different people's sentimentality is different, I imagine. The copyright form is more standard. It's a fairly simplistic copyright form. I bet they haven't gotten too many copyright claims that they've actually done anything with at Bell. Moving on, we have a Gamma Switch article. Nacon has acquired Cricket 19 developer Big Ant Studios for 42.5 million. Yep, haven't heard of either one of those companies. Here we have a game called Minesweeper Versus, which uh, just looks like a Minesweeper game. Possibly a mobile port, five ninety nine, with online player versus player, but no single player. Oddly, English only. That's weird. I don't think I would want any kind of Minesweeper game that didn't have at least some single player. Jimatsu has Journey to the Savage Planet for PC coming to Steam on January twenty eighth, which I guess this is a game. I've heard about, but I th think this is probably a game that I heard about and then forgot about. Hmm. 
kind of looks like a survival game. Is this from the same developer that made the game a story about my uncle? Because there was a swing via a electric whip in that game. I bet this is. Well, I tried. I I tried to get all the way to the end of that game, a story about my uncle, but at the last second, it, they were so emphasizing and frustrating me with the the swinging and jumping that I just rage quit at the last second. I was basically probably less than a hundred paces away from the end, and I was just like, "Well, this game is not going to be much better in the next." 20 minutes which typically I try to make it to the end of games and if I am going to rage quit I, I usually rage quit a lot earlier than that and a story about my uncle not particularly the greatest story about an uncle uh, particularly if you'd missed all the collectible side story stuff um that company that made a story about my uncle also made went on to make Goat Simulator, and definitely that game felt like you were just playing Goat Simulator. The controls were not tight, not well programmed. Well, this thing has been happening for a few days now. TechRaptor has the article, GameStop's stock trading has been halted several times due to a sudden spike. This is because Reddit's uh, forum Wall Street Bets is as best as I can understand it just insanely buying all of the stocks um, so that it eliminates any surplus stocks of GameStop and they're forcing people that have like uh, regular traders not like day traders to then buy GameStop at a much higher price which is creating a spiral loop of cause and effect where GameStop stock is just going up and up. Um, I saw someone post just today, just a few hours ago, that they were going to not sell their stock in GameStop until it was $1,000. It's not even $100 right now, and the state of GameStop does not justify it being valued at a thousand dollars frankly this still feels a lot like this is a pump and dump um but i i don't know too much about it or what they're trying to really accomplish other than it's just i think literally crazy people doing crazy things um Like, yeah, it, it, if anything, the fact that Wall Street bets can, can manipulate the stock market like this, knowingly, openly saying that they were manipulating the stock market and planning to manipulate the stock market, you know that people have done the same thing in secret behind closed doors. It also makes a great argument that I believe in, in that there should be severe limitations on who can actually own stock in companies. Um, frankly, if you own shares in companies, you should probably be close to be, being qualified to actually be on the board of that company. So you, uh, you need to be fairly rich and fairly business-minded. And I think anyone else, instead of having their retirements in portfolios uh, that are traded on the stock market by people with gambling addictions that are gambling with, with people's retirements, it should be a case of every retirement just being a government bond-based uh, guaranteed return system. Like, each, it should have never been a case where you had any chance whatsoever to lose your retirement because Bernie Madoff was running a scam. Um, one of the people who lost a severe amount of their retirement, from what I could 
figure was Larry King Live, who just died over the weekend. Uh, not Larry King Live. His name is a last name Live. Larry King of Larry King Live. Um, so he seemingly had to work a lot later into his life than he probably should have because he lost a lot of um lost the money lost a lot of money in the Bernie Madoff scandal moving on we have a game on steam here called a thousand shards which just looks like it's an infinite runner game low effort 59 cents this is probably the first bad game we've seen today that actually was at least correctly priced apparently full audio on every language it supports according to the developer next we have a game called red mist rivers blood which is a platformer beat em up game it's zoomed out too much and clearly it's just asset flip backgrounds and it's not visually polished $19.99 English full audio yep we, we are getting a lot of way overpriced games lately yeah, somebody, people are getting either desperate or crazier as far as the pricing of games. Next we have Pan Arcade Airlines, which looks like a mobile game. Looks low effort flying simulator, which, nope. 99 cents, English full audio. Spend the $60 or more and get Microsoft Flight Simulator instead. If you want to Mother, simulate Father, flying. Here we have a game done. called Fiction. Hashtag uh, F3. Uh, which I assume that's what that is. is a hashtag. Uh, because number sign and then no number. That wouldn't make that much sense. Although it might if you were doing a hexadecimal uh, color code. But then three symbols is not hexadecimal. Either. This looks to me like it's just an asset flip surreal game. $4.99 English full audio. Nothing there. Impressive. Next we have Runeverse, the card game. In early access on Steam. Which I feel like Runeverse has been on cell phones for a while. The new fully 3D multiplayer card game definitely feels a lot like Hearthstone, although it's kind of odd to sideways. And you have like full 3D models here, which might actually hinder the expansion of games like this. It's early access, free to play, English full audio, but then it requires a third party account. I will put this on the fall list, but in all honesty, I'm thinking. If I ever have to leave Shadowverse, I'm thinking I might try a little bit harder to find a non-collectible card game that to play or just talk about video game news solely without even having a, a game distraction happen because it's been a while. It's been a fairly long amount of time since since I, I've started playing collectible card games and I could probably use a bit of a break. Next we have a game called Fuchu Class Hub, which I think probably means future, but one misspelling of that and you can get a very different meaning. Yeah, it's just looks like it is just a VR game of some sort a VR playground free but then two DLCs that bring it up to $20 English full audio hmm. learning modules is what they're calling the DLC hmm. I don't I don't think there's 
enough here to really call this an educational piece of software. I think they're they're pulling shenanigans to say it's something it really isn't. What brings you Next, we have a game called Capsule Hotel Simulator, which, okay, this looks like a incredibly overstocked and over-decorated capsule hotel cube. You've got a guitar over here, you've got this little side desk, you've got a little side desk here. Um, you've got all these kind of decorations. You've got a hot plate. This is too much stuff for for a capsule hotel or what I would expect to see in a capsule hotel here the guy is even smoking cigarettes 59 cents English full audio it's not even and then two achievements that almost make me think it's like an achievement game more than anything that's a weird weird offering why I would want to simulate being in a capsule hotel, though, I have no idea. That that seems fairly ridiculous. Do you know the eternal life? Today. I have like fifty. I have like 50 shadows now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know why you'd want to simulate a capsule hotel simulator. Or living in a capsule hotel. Uh, I definitely would not be happy living in a capsule hotel. I can obviously immediately recognize that. Like, I would probably be happier living in a car or living on the street more in an open area than such a small room and i guess that is part of the cyberpunk storyline is that it, the population might explode so much that people are forced into incredibly tiny rooms and capsules Anyways, moving on, we have something that's a bunch of Asian characters in the number 31. This looks like to me it's probably a horror, low visual polish game. Maybe a little asset flippy, probably Chinese. English not supported, 279 Chinese only. Yep, there's just kind of some inconsistent visuals here makes it feel like an asset flip so it doesn't look look high higher qual high enough quality I'm not a quack. you'll see The problem with this card is you have to keep it alive, otherwise you lose your 30 shadows and you don't want to do that. Next we have a game called Rico Jump on Steam, which looks like an asset flip parkour game where they probably want you to design the levels yourself, free to play with some DLC, English and German. Yeah, I don't see anything here that interests me. And if I had just curated most of these games, we would have had a particularly short experience today. Hmm. Well, apparently, IGN China 
released a documentary called Gaming Gamers Under COVID-19. Uh, has English subtitles to turn on the captions. I guess that's what... Hmm. That was the reason. Allegedly, one trader on Reddit has turned $53,566 into $11 million via the manipulation of GameStop. Um, but I'm not sure if that means he checked out and... Uh, and took the money. Because if you don't cash out and bank that profit, like you're you're just gonna lose it. Hmm. Video game, according to GameIndustry.biz, video game project raised $23 million on Kickstarter in 2020. Hmm, interesting. Am I just following, like, my own Twitter feed, or no? I'm following retweets of other people. Hmm. I don't know if it's really video game news, but the Ken Levine character... Uh, the developer of Bioshock, Ken Levine, said he was bored and he would answer uh, questions if you asked him, but he would lie about any questions about the next game and development. But there is probably a good question you could ask Ken Levine to get some information out of him, and that is, uh, as simple as it sounds, have you read any good books lately? Because it was definitely his enthusiasm from reading Ayn Rand that led to Bioshock being created in the first place. Uh, you can, certainly without even asking him a question, though, extrapolate something. Ken Levine obviously is not being overworked as a overall head of general concepts for the next game that they're working on. Which may be a Bioshock game, maybe not. Um, because if he was being overworked, he wouldn't have the free time to say he's bored and get on Twitter, even in the middle of a pandemic. Hmm. Moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Gunbots, which is obviously a cell phone shoot 'em up clone. Uh, $4.99. I guess it's not a clone, it's just a cell phone port of some kind of shoot 'em up. But they're calling it a tower defense game. $4.99. Totally not worth that. Okay, I could go two, four, six, and save myself one turn. Or I do six, and then let him hit me. Oh my goodness. I should have done two, four, six, because that guy was just going to refill after each one. Well, I just lost. Because I wasn't paying enough attention to this card. Reinhardt the Deathless. Hmm. Hmm. Probably could have won there. Next we have a game called Encore Runefall, which is just a match a Candy Crush clone. Six dollars and twenty-four cents, English and German. You're too strong. Here we have a game called Solace 128, which looks like it's just a laser puzzle game. Nothing special there. Fourteen ninety-nine. Wow. 
are just getting ridiculously expensive sometimes with some of these games. Here we have a game called Tap Those Targets, which is clearly for touchscreens and really wouldn't work well on PC if you don't have a touchscreen. $1.79 English only. At least when they port cell phone games like that, they bothered to make it widescreen. Um, TechCrafter has a review here for Crossword City Chronicles, which this one's for my family. looks like it is a crossword no more closer to Scrabble than anything else. I wouldn't mind playing a Scrabble single player experience though. Yeah, particularly if you're going to put a moderately interesting storyline with it. Um, unfortunately, they hated it. This is probably one of the lowest scores I've ever seen TechCrafter give a game. 3.5? Crossword City Chronicles is a fairy, I, I imagine that means fairly lazy mobile port which pairs repetitive puzzles with lackluster dialogue, mysteries which are solved for you, and grind based mechanisms. Pros a larger number of cases to play and short puzzles make it good for playing during breaks, but then why are you playing it on your computer at that point? Cons, it's extremely repetitive, simple puzzles. Mysteries do not actually require puzzles. Gimmicks make puzzles less fun rather than more. And dull and almost non-existent dialogue. Well, that sucks. I had kind of hoped that that might have been better. But I'm not super surprised. Game of Sutra has a blog here. How long, how low can you go? Um, and it's talking about racing to the bottom with microtransactions basically there's a whole bunch of meme images here and, and talk talk about it the, this art blog was originally published in October 4th of 2019 so they're just re-blogging old information on Gamma Sutra uh, yeah, Konami restructured, uh, which mostly I think this has more to do with just Konami restructuring their their entire company. I don't think they give really much thought at all to their video game division. So it's not like they shut down what is left of their video game division as much as they just shifted it into other departments, but it doesn't really mean anything so here you here they're just dissolving their production division one two and three but we don't even really know if that's video game production it could be many of the many other things that konami digital entertainment or konami in general works on um i don't even think konami has worked in partnership with any like to, to do any kind of anime movies or anything lately either and one report I definitely saw is that this restructuring is really just coming in line with what companies like Nintendo and Sega had already done um, so yeah uh, on one hand basically nothing is changing which is for Konami bad on the other hand at least it's not getting worse because if konami were to sell off like all of its ip to games to some other company uh, i would think it would be something like tencent i think you'd end up finding something like silent hill with microtransactions and it would be a cynical cash grab and not a loving re-release and frankly, they don't even have the source code for a lot of the Silent Hill games, as from what I've heard, heard. So, or at least one of the games they lost the source code to, I think, was the real story. So, yeah. Uh, I don't expect much is going to change with Konami. Uh, because Konami still probably has plenty of money. And they aren't anywhere close to going out of business. The pandemic is hitting everyone very hard in Japan, though. 
maybe a year from now, maybe two, well, things will start changing. But I, I feel like all Japanese companies typically were so incredibly conservative anyways that they were sitting on probably piles of cash that will have them survive for a decent amount of time. Plus, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some major government bailouts uh, from the Japanese uh, government for any famous Japanese companies because they don't want to have Konami sell its stuff to something like, um, well, Samsung, for instance. Yeah, the Japanese would not be happy with a South Korean company uh, taking over. Moving on, we have the RuneScape developer Jagex being acquired by the Car Carlisle Group. Um, I've heard of the Car Carlisle Group, if I can pronounce that word, but I don't recall what they've done. Hmm. With a name like the Carlisle Group, though, it, it probably is a, a a group that is more of an investment group. And that, yeah, it says it's a global investment company more than a video game company acquiring another video game company, which means there might be some weirdness as far as how much they care and how much they want to support Jagex and how much they just want to gut the company and sell it for parts. Check Raptor has a review for Cyber Shadow, which looks like an old NES, like the Ninja game. Let's see what they have to say. 9.0. Interesting. A glorious love letter to retro Ninja action Cyber Shadows. A must for fans of high-speed fun and delicious 1990s cheesy camp. Pros are crisp, gorgeous pixel art, sharp stick action platforming, and remarkable, rewarding level design. Uh, cons are that it's lacking additional game modes. There is definitely some weirdness in a game like this, though, in the sense that this may not be the kind of game for me. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if... If I tried to play any of the Ninja Gaiden series, the old games, I would fail probably fairly quickly and pretty miserably. And this very well might be the same experience. I, I need a baby mode. I need an easy mode. Mm. I don't know if it's because I'm talking so much or what, but my tongue feels like it's getting swollen. Which, with that... With the exception of that being a symptom for an imaginary disease in like a Dr. Seuss story, I don't think that means much. Uh, well, you, there, there is a way, isn't there, where you can, like, get an infection or, uh, stab yourself in the tongue and make it swell. But I didn't do either one of those, and I think I would have noticed. Hmm. There are some, I think the plague or something causes the tongue to swell. How can this guy be thinking so long? Something about the connections now have, have changed. Where it does seem like it is totally willing to just let the character think for a really long time. Yeah, we have a game on Steam called Moonbase. Mm, looks like a VR game that looks decent. Free to play. English full audio. I would say put this one on your fall list. Or if you have VR, get it. Because this doesn't look awful for what it is. For a little simulation thing. If you do have a VR headset, you're always looking for new content. Here's that game on Steam, Crossword City Chronicles. Yeah. I don't have so little faith in Tech Raptor that I feel like 
I would put this on the fall list just to be contrarian. Also, if I'm looking at these puzzles, they are fairly small boards and the puzzles do seem to be fairly simplistic puzzles. There probably is a better Scrabble game out there. Or you could do something like Murder by Numbers, which is pictograms. Typically, people do go with pictograms more than word puzzles because that translates to more langu languages easier. This is English and French. I'm going to skip this and not put it on the fall list. And maybe that means I might be, be I might have been led astray, but I don't think so. I'll trust Tech Raptor with a review that bad. See, Gamatsu has an article here. Elastomania Remastered has been announced for the PS5, Xbox Series, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. The best version of Elastomania yet. I don't know what this game is, though. It doesn't look particularly that interesting. I think, at this point, I want to stop covering games that came out on Steam, and let's just cover the news and just wrap up, because... Yeah, we can leave some for Wednesday. So, Gamatsu has an article here. The Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity shipments top $3.30.5 million, where Atlee Ryza 2 tops 220,000 sales. These came out, I don't think, at the same time, but that is a distinct, almost one... 11 times difference not aware arguably I would say Atlee Rise is a much better game <clears throat> Wonder Boy in Monster World has a new trailer out new adventure pack trailer if you want to google uh, YouTube and watch it it looks it won't be long now. looks nice enough I don't know why I'm not showing you here. Let's just, just come over here and show it. Like, so you're in some 3D perspectives sometimes, but I think mostly you're in a side-scrolling 2D platform view perspective. The Wonder Boy series is a long-running series, but I don't really want to play any of the older games. But I would be willing to play a couple of the newest games in this series. Pretty much where Monster Boy game happened. And it's kind of nice to see a Persian, even, even if like the Aladdin Persian character never really did exist. It's kind of nice to see that that be something that you can write a story for even if it is just a fictional story that never actually existed um, where for a while there it definitely felt like they were uh sjw's in particular were saying just no you can't depict persians or or middle easterners like aladdin because that's just promoting the stereotype But arguably, I would say the the Persian Aladdin stereotype is is a better stereotype to promote than the, oh now they're all just uh, extremely impoverished and stream extremely religious and and controlled under dictatorship um, Middle Eastern Muslim people, which is probably closer to the to the real experience if you go through the Middle East and, and places where Persia once stood. Hmm. Moving on, we have a game called Casual Challenge Players Club Anime Bill Hard Game. Like they misspelled billiards. Why you would mix a bad 
enemy with bad billiards. I have no idea. This is $1.79 with the third party EULA. And it's English full on you. I, I said I was going to stop calling games though, so. Let's see. Gamatsu has Guilty Gear Strive game modes trailer and more modes are detailed. So yeah, Guilty Gear Strive is still being hyped up and they're working on releasing it. There, some of this looks like it might be microtransaction-y. I think that would kind of suck for a fighting game. And some of those game modes may not make a lot of sense. Ten skeletons in your hand. Do this. And then attack here. Attack here. Attack here. Play that. And then do that. can pretty much win next turn if I just play Lucifer and, and evolve. Hmm. Yeah, here's the Gamatsu article. Wonder Boy Asha and Monster World launches April 22nd in Japan and quarter two in 2021 in the West. Yep. Yep. You, you'd, you'd have to think that this was a was was Wonder Girl, not Wonder Boy, with the dual earrings and the hair bow and the shirt. Hmm. Did they swap at some point where Wonder Boy is now a girl? That would be weird. Or maybe this is Asha and Wonder Boy is a different character. That'd be weird too. To not not play as the main titles character. Anyways, Gimatsu has the Paradigm Paradox opening movie due out May 27th in Japan. This is an Otome visual novel. Yeah, only made in visual novel. Which, yeah. All of these intros really don't tell you anything at all. They, they're designed to be super interesting, but they don't even... They only slightly even hint as to what the story is going to be. Uh, Gamato has Silver Star Japan Table Games Collection for Switch launching April 8th. Which this seems to be um, poker of some sort. Mahjong. Uh, Western Chess. And some sort of card games that's not poker. Hmm. Let's see what it says here. Honoka AI Tosu Daifugo. I don't know what Daifugo is. Hmm. Seems like they're combining a couple, several games from several different developers. Let's see what the. Let's see if the trailer possibly can give me an indication. I believed. I am the void, and these wings destruction. You're a solid fighter. See what this trailer shows me. Oh, well, there's blackjack. There's mahjong. And, hmm, guess Daijogo might be something, some kind of, I don't know if it's closer to cribbage, 
or what? Or maybe, yeah, I, I would say it's probably like gin rummy or uh, cribbage or yeah, gin rummy would be my guess as far as a card game. It's kind of weird these days to to sell a card game that literally is just poker or just gin rummy. Maybe Daifugo is is a game I've just never heard of. So I'd need three more victories, but at least now I can play different ways. Let's do a little research here and see what Daifugo comes up with. Let's see, Daifugo. Grand Millionaire, Very Rich Man, or Dai Hing Min, Grand Popper, also known as Tycoon, is a Japanese shedding type card game for three or more players with a standard 52 card deck. The objective of the game is to get rid of all the cards as fast as possible by playing progressively stronger cards than those of the previously player. The winner is called Daifugu, the Grand Millionaire. Um, Earning various advantages in the next round. And the last person is called the Grand Popper. The game is very similar to the Chinese climbing game Big Two and Zing Sheng Yo and Y-O-U. The to the Vietnam Vietnamese game Tin Lin. Tian Lin. And the Western games like President and the Great Dal Muti. Which I don't recognize those either. But honestly, there's about a billion different card games if you take all the variety of rules that exist out there. And most people don't know most of them. In the old days when people didn't have video games, there were uh, people were a lot more knowledgeable on different types of card games, but. There's a reason why they've only put like poker on TV and, and pretty much no other card game ever. Oops, hit my microphone. That wasn't even too loud. Normally when I hit it, it's way worse than that. Yeah, I feel like I'm about to fall into a meat coma, but I'm, I may just be tired. Like, let's see. I think we already talked about this, but Square Enix trademarks Ever Crisis, the first soldier in Shinra logo, logo in Japan. Now it's been up, updated a second time for Australia. So. And Europe. So we know it's going to come out there. I don't know if it's video game related, but there, there has been this slowly growing fight with the Australian uh, government trying to implement this law that says that YouTube has to pay standard normal newspapers um, every time like an article shows up in a Google search and they're, they're, they've definitely written the law in such a way that that they cannot really wiggle out of it uh, so basically this is uh, at least the way it's being demonstrated or applied to and talked about in the West in the United States it, it really feels like this is just a disenfranchisement law specifically designed to empower local Australian news companies and and make uh, Google um, pay money to other companies uh, that Google doesn't feel they need to and frankly the way the internet works Google's right like the idea that you can't leak to a website without paying breaks the internet literally um, so Google is saying well if you don't reconsider this law we're just gonna have we may have to shut down Google which okay yeah if if Google literally just shuts down Google for all the Australian people, it they wouldn't shut it down for anyone else. Um, then Australia wouldn't have Google, so. 
there's there's a lot going on in the background there, but it, it goes to show certainly the kind of insane antics that that uh, Australian politicians can get up to, and just kind of the extreme protectionist slash conservative uh, ideas that float around in Australia. Like, Australians generally you take to be fairly laid back people, but in their politics they kind of aren't. At least from what I've seen. Let's see. Moving on, Gamma Sutra has a article here. You can pitch your talks for GDC's 2021 summits, the VRDC, and the Game Sem Game Career Sem Seminar. Of course, this is only for game developers. GDC is only for game developers talking to other game developers, or at least ambitious wannabe game developers. It's kind of ridiculous that they're trying to go forward with GDC in a virtual aspect. Gamma Switcher has an article here. The Pokemon Company is clamping down on Sword, Shield, and Home hackers. Which, okay. I don't even know why you would bother to try and hack any of that, because it's not like that's a good experience. Yeah, I I'm... Frankly, surprised anybody is even bothering to play Sword and Shield. Tech Raptor has an article here. Fan designs a Paper Zelda RPG mock-up, which you're in a weird position here because, like, we've never seen a Paper Zelda in the same way as a Paper Mario. Um, I don't know if. Maybe that was the direction that the paper series should have gone. Um, to have like paper RPG games and early entry younger kid RPG games with other Nintendo characters. It, it certainly would have been an interesting thought to have like a paper Metroid. Uh, considering it's been so long since we've had a regular Metroid. You could have at least kept people's interest. But then you're also in this weird position where... A, Nintendo's probably going to just DMCA this. And they've already made a remake of one of the Zelda games. So, uh, one of the Game Boy Zelda games. So, I don't feel like they would want the graphics to take a step back and look like paper-ish. Like, th this doesn't really feel that papery. As much as it looks more just like it's just bad graphics. And so you would definitely need need this to look more polished. It's fairly pointless though to, to get hyped about any kind of fan project. We know it's not going to go anywhere. No. Well, here's some newer news. The Jagat's latest sale is being disputed in court. Let's see. Jagex has found themselves in the middle of a legal quagmire. Earlier today, U.S. investments firm the Carlisle Group confirmed they'd be acquiring Jagex. However, the Delaware-based company Plutus Sama has moved the block to sale and filed for injunctive relief. So what's the controversy? Well, this is being described by TechRaptor as an extremely messy, very difficult situation with plenty of legalese to wade through. Essentially, in 2019, Fu Kong Interactive Entertainment, Jagex parents' company, at the time was forced to sell the RuneScape studio via, via auction. Um... Uh, Which Plus state it won that auction. It won't be long now. 
Uh, Plutus proceeded with the purchase through a limited partner, Platinum Fortune. It subsequently became apparent that Fukong was involved in a huge Chinese fraud operation to the tune of $200 billion with its partner in Pluton, Plu, Pluton, Platinum being funded in part of the fraud. Plutus sold its ownership stake in Platinum Fortune to a U.S.-based firm called MacArthur Fortune Holding as a result of the fraudulent ties uh, of the partner. This is as practically soap opera level stuff. After the sale, Platinum Fortune and MacArthur by expansion uh, ostensibly owned the rights to Jagex. Okay. And Plutos is effectively disputing that this is the case. The company is saying that although they transferred their ownership rights to Platinum, the ownership of the Cambridge based development studio was not included in this transfer. So read, read the contract basically. Um, Plutos is further alleging that Fukong executives, including former owner Yan Jing Gong, have been repeatedly blocking Plutus from acquiring Jagex through villainous and nefarious actions. The dispute therefore arises because Plutus Sama believes it still has ownership rights, while MacArthur Fortune and Platinum Fortune are laying claim to same rights. Alright, well, this definitely is going to be one for the courts at this rate. Um. Yep. I am frankly a little surprised that there isn't more stories like that that happen. But certainly we are in the economic times in which shenanigans like this, which is probably is a case of everybody being a little dirty, it usually is, uh, but I imagine corporate espionage and shenanigans like that are going to get revealed more and more as the economy tanks more and more. Let's see. Next, we have a TechRaptor article here. That's eight things we noticed about the Resident Evil Village demo. I had the opportunity to watch someone play this, and I kind of, um, I kind of skipped it. I, I don't think they're really going to spoil too much for you, but. There's foreshadowing of a boss, there's puzzle foreshadowing, there's lore building, uh, there's indirect character introductions, there's establishing a historical timeline, there's Resident Evil 4 inspired level designs. The, the thing that really stinks here, I would say, is you, you specifically, uh, the, the, um, the Resident Evil 4 remake was quietly just reboot was just quietly rebooted, so I'm not sure if I'm more interested in playing Village or any Resident Evil game that's going to be inspired by Resident Evil 4, but would be new content versus just playing the reboot of Resident Evil 4. Um, I probably should go. Like, was I not saying the exact same thing earlier? in the stream i should i should definitely hope for resident evil 7 to be good and inspired by resident evil 4 and even better than resident evil 4 instead of hoping for the remake and asking for the remake uh, that's the exact same thing i said about the fans for skate 1 and 2. Um, the other things they found out a world steeped in the middle ages and who is the maiden I would not be surprised one bit, though, if all that we see here is kind of prequel stuff that happened maybe 100 years before the actual events of Village. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if all of this was made specifically for the demo, and you might end up in this house, but you might not. Um, if you look at the demo for Resident Evil 7, that was taking place in the same house, but also the things you did in the house in the demo 
It was much more just wandering around the house and finding items and trying to find secret Easter eggs. Seemingly so far, we haven't even been uh, privy to any indication that there might be Easter eggs in the demo, but I suspect there might be. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if the level is used, but the characters aren't used or they're used completely different. I wouldn't even be crazy if the maiden actually turns out to be like a male that's been re remodeled or now nah, that'd be a little crazy. They, they drew those characters too well to potentially uh, not use them. Um, moving on, TechRaptor has an article here. System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition involves porting the game to the uh, Kex engine. So, according to Night Dive Studios, latest System Shock Kickstarter update, System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition will be added to the PC pre-orders for System Shock, uh, which opens which opens near the end of February, along with a new demo. Hmm. Why is System Shock Enhanced Edition being added to the remaster? Probably because the remaster is not going to be as good as they thought. Hmm. It's now a source port into Night Dive's Kex engine. That's a terrible name. Um... Why not put an N in there and have call it the Kinex engine? That that was an old toy. Hmm. All the characters and weapons are being remade. So what? Why does why does that mean you that you need to offer more to people who have already paid for the remaster and are expecting just the remaster? System shock as it currently stands, is still a mess as far as the level of different versions that are available and will be available and which ones you actually would want to play versus ones you can skip. I probably won't even bother to get this done uh, off screen. But they are being fairly nice and giving me more card packs. Maybe they've realized that I'm not getting the daily quest done fast enough so they're, they're giving me card packs instead <laughs> moving on tech raptor has an updated gamestop uh, article Let's see the chaos at gamestop stock trading has continued taking the company's value to market to reach high record highs i did briefly think about like what could one do to benefit from this i don't think there is anything you could do frankly the the truth is gamestop at any point could go bankrupt and um whether they're pumping and and dumping stock shares all they want or they don't go bankrupt and people at wall street bets somehow get a majority share of stocks and then they own GameStop and then they run it into the ground. But being late to the party, you, you don't want to buy at a high. You don't want to short because shorting is always insane. Uh, you really can't do anything else at all. Um, so your best bet, and this is definitely not investing advice, this is because investing, once again, I will say, is just gambling for rich people. But my best bet would be buy a industry index of some sort that covers all video game companies. And you're probably even too late for that. But that way you could maybe, maybe you don't even buy GameStop, but other game video game companies get a rise in their valuation and their trading value. Uh, simply by sheer association that that's about the best thing you can do or you go in the opposite direction go for commodities buy gold it would be probably a terrible time to buy like gold or uh like light sweet crude um 
things like that. Things that are just standard things that always trade and normally are standard. Um, but yeah, buy something that's low, but not so low that it's a penny stock and on the verge of being delisted. But yeah, mostly don't do any of that. Save your money, don't risk it. Now is not the time to gamble just because you see other people gambling. That's that's about the dumbest thing you can do is you go to Vegas and you see some rich person, some CEO who's playing blackjack at $100 a a, a game, a turn, and then you start trying to compete where you're just a burger flipper and you can't afford $100 a game. <clears throat> see, moving on, TechRaptor has an article the the Super Mario 3D All-Stars limited release window closes soon. What's next? So this is basically a retrospective on the limited release of those games. Hmm. Honestly, I couldn't, I wouldn't be super surprised if I ever do get around to getting a Switch. If I play a few games relatively, uh, quickly a few switch games and then i immediately decide to just kind of mod it and and play older games on it and use it as a retro console like and if i'm gonna go that route i, I maybe then just hack it to play like realms of new games too while you're at it Particularly when you have a scenario like that where if I was desperate to play Mario 64 and Sunshine and Mario Galaxy and I could not get a used copy of of the 3D All-Stars and they didn't release a alternative, then yeah, I don't, I don't think there's they're they're giving i don't think they're giving me a real option so otherwise so you have to sail the high seas of piracy at that point all right i just looked at my humble bundle list and didn't see anything new so let me just look at my twitter feed now and we're nearly going three hours and see if there's any major bits of news to talk about otherwise we'll call it a day here we have a TechRaptor article we'll talk about on Wednesday. Wednesday. The co-founders of Scavenger Studios have allegedly fostered toxic work environment for two plus years. I wouldn't be surprised. Don't they all? Um, but yeah, that stuff is, is coming out quickly. Yeah. Konami is coming out directly now and saying they have not shut down their video game division. That they just restructured. Um, which, it's gotta suck when people come out with happiness when they think you've shut down your video game division. Because that's really what people wanted with Konami. Nobody's, nobody's tweeting that they're sad. Um, they that they that konami maybe have, would have shut shut down there um Let's see keep on scrolling yeah open critic is restating that resident evil 4 remake shifts to a different team at capcom We already knew that. Open Critic's a little late to the party on that one. Hmm. Yeah, one of the things I definitely started removing from my watch later list on YouTube was videos specifically from YouTube creators. Like, uh, I've just completely lost any interest in listening to them and... and and pretending like they're giving any kind of good advice or even good bits of information. Even though they 
they tried really hard over the past two years to be more communicative with creators. They failed to make an interesting video or promote their videos from YouTube creators well. And mostly when they when the bigger Google or YouTube makes an announcement, it is always bad news and it is always seen and heard by a lot more creators than than YouTube uh, creators channel YouTube channel hmm G4 just tweeted when it's already 2021 and there's no news about our relaunch so they just felt the need to uh, felt the need to like remind people that they were relaunching anyways I'm gonna call that a day so that's gonna be it for the stream as always I ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below and if you want to support me further there's a link to patreon or you can friend me on steam and gift me a game off my wish list thank you for watching have a good evening